So how is your education delivered and what will PTs gain from, um, from this education? So my goal is to deliver it in a couple of different ways. Firstly, I run in-house workshops because I'm a big fan of not only just getting the theory, but gaining the practical skills. So that's really, really important. So I've got in-house workshops that I'm going to be offering to trainers. But also, I want to make sure it's easily accessible because not everyone can travel to see me. So I'm also going to have, or I'm also going to have, should I say, um, online stuff. So online courses where people can just gather some extra knowledge and gather a little bit more theory behind what a personal trainer needs to know. Because what can happen with a lot of educational courses, I think we go down these extreme rabbit holes where we start learning so much detail about the foundations of the science behind maybe nutrition and stuff like that, which is really important. But there has to be a practical and simple take home from this knowledge. Because otherwise all we're doing is learning science without any practical application and that's where it gets lost so my goal is to deliver information through as i said a workshop or for online but basically try and cut out anything a trainer doesn't need to know and make it a hundred percent focused on what the trainer needs to know if that makes sense mm, absolutely so could you tell me a little bit more about um your mission or the mission of um, present movement. Well, tell me a little bit more about that. So what I'm trying to achieve with present movement is allowing personal trainers to have a bit more confidence, as I mentioned earlier, a bit more confidence when they're working with any client who's experiencing, as I said, a bit of pain, a bit of achiness, a bit of stiffness, however, however the brain decides to protect the body. And that's it at the end of the day. It's the brain protecting the body. When you feel some stiffness, you wake up in the morning, your body feels a bit achy, or you are experiencing pain. And that might be because of a previous injury. It might be something to do with your, your mechanics. Loads of things might affect that. But my goal and mission is just to give a little bit more education about some of the things we need to understand with the information going into the brain and how we can affect that. So how we can start to affect maybe the, the neuromatrix. So what we'll talk about is the brain and how the brain basically processes all this information and then what it decides to send out. Is it a signal of pain? Is it a certain uh, alter, alteration in, in motor control and biomechanics? Or is it a stress response? Maybe it's more of a hormonal response. But we can create, or hopefully, start to create the right kind of environment. So not to go off on a bit of a tangent, I want to answer your question, but I also want to give a bit of background behind the question as well. So it's understanding that we have to create this ideal environment. And one big part of present movement is not just understanding movement, actually. It's understanding the brain and the things we need to understand from a psychological perspective as well. And I'm passionate about doing that, not just looking at the client and thinking, well, how do I affect their beliefs and their psychology? Actually, it's looking at the personal trainer as well and looking at that trainer and going, well, look, maybe you've got some outdated beliefs. Maybe you've got some extreme biases. Maybe you're quite fixed minded in how you think about movement. Because traditionally in the fitness industry, we've got quite a fixed mindset in how we think about how someone should move. And when we look at individuals, the key is they are all individuals. So if we're dealing with an individual and we're trying to take a person-centered approach, which is personal training as we should be, then surely we've got to have diverse amount of tools, I suppose. What I, the analogy I use is imagine that you've got this toolkit. And as a personal trainer, we've got to use different tools and different people. And our movement toolkit should actually be big enough to help different kinds of people. So for example, how someone might squat with back pain might be totally different to how someone might squat with knee pain. Mm -hmm. So we had to learn to tweak movement, look at that person in front of us and say, look, do I have the skills and the knowledge to understand movement a little bit better and ultimately make it personal? Yeah, it's a bit of a cliche saying personal training is about making it personal. 
but, but we, we don't always make it personal. We go, here's your training program. Here's how you need to move. This is it. We do 10 reps here, three sets here, and that's it. And for certain individuals, brilliant. But how many people fit that, that perfect kind of criteria? There's too many other variables there. Not a one size fits all, is it? We can't really. Well, go it, that. it can't be. We, we, have, we can have a general, I call it a general template rather than an exact formula. Mm -hmm. So in life and in the fitness industry and in business in general, people love a certain formula. And in some contexts, a formula might work really well. But when we're working with, a real life human being, an exact formula just isn't gonna cut it. Yeah. You're gonna want a general template and go, you know, these are certain movement patterns I might wanna see, but within that template, you have to be willing to tweak stuff. You have to be willing sometimes to let go of your own biases mm -hmm. because we all have a certain bias in how we like to move and how we like to train. But we gotta be really careful about that bias coming out in our clients. And that is something, well, that takes a lot of self-awareness. And this is why with present movement, I talk a lot about personal development stuff. And actually, even though the business is called movement, I'm talking about movement within the body, but also within the brain. And I like to talk about this in different ways. It's not just about specifically pain and injury all the time. It's taking that step back and going, yes, that's important. But if we don't look at the bigger picture and understand ourselves first as coaches, we're on the back foot straight away. Thank you very much. Really enjoyed talking to you today. My pleasure.